Hey, this is Justin from Hillcrest Cabinets and we're talking about uh, mosaic training. So I'm just going to do a quick once over of how to do the optimizer and things in the cut list. So I got a kitchen here that we're just going to run to the cut list and check out how that works. So in the cut list tab up here, you can identify any specific parts you can, so there's several cut lists you can go through. You can go through the all parts, door sizes. This gives you all the sizes of the doors. Uh, you can go through your door cut list. This is if you're cutting, you know, styles and rails out using mosaic setups. Uh, drawer box and tray sizes gives you all your sizes of your drawer box and trays, your different drawer templates. Uh, tray cut list, drawer cap cut list separated, uh, metal drawers, face frames, if you're cutting face frames it gives you your face frame parts, panel stock, this gives you a full cut list of your panel material, uh, and different, way, uh, different stuff like that. Usually what I'll do is I'll go to all parts because it's the easiest way to optimize and then I'll separate my different materials that I'm cutting. So if I'm cutting three quarter MDF or five eighths white melamine, you know, you can isolate that here. This is the interiors of the cabinet and this is the finished material. So say I want to cut this and I want to ice here. You can select the room. You can isolate the room. You can select one individually. You can select multiple. So we're just going to select the kitchen in this case. You can also isolate the cabinets, so you can go cabinet number and it goes by this number, either N3 or 12, 14, this is room one. You, you don't disregard the room number, you isolate the room here, um, but you can isolate the number for the cabinet here. 19, 12, 20, or 12, 21, and if you type that in here, say if I just type in four, it'll give me only number cabinet four. If you leave it empty, it gives you all of them. So we're going to optimize it all and I'll do both materials. So I got my finished parts and my melamine. So you, I should do that a little slower. So you go, you hit the optimize button up here and this is where you select a material again and you click OK. If the material already exists, it'll pop up with something like this. Just click OK to overwrite it. And it pops up with this window, which is the optimize. So this is a completely different set of software within Mosaic that runs everything to the CNC machine. So if you're if you're cutting things on the CNC machine, this is the software you're going to use to cut it. So you're you have a drop down menu here. This is the material tab. So if you have any remnants, you can add remnants right here. You can dump in a remnant. You can change the size. And that will, uh, with these remnants, you can uh, run it to cut those different remnants out. I'm not going to get into that too much in, in this uh, video, but we can go in deeper into that later. And set your width trim, your length trim. So that's trimming, you know, if, if this box was your sheet, it's the edge that is trimming out. So quarter inch on this, uh, the length, and quarter inch on the width. Um, that's our standard. This is the sheet size. This is whether it has grain or not, so whether the parts will flip. Uh, so we'll change to the parts tab. This is the parts tab. You can go through a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm not going to get too deep into this video or in, into this for this video. So we'll just go right to the optimize tab. For the optimize tab, you have there's a lot of things you have to set up for this. So you have to set up your tool set. You have to set up the machine that you have, and we can get into that, that in another video. This is your part spacing. So if you wanted an inch apart, you can set an inch apart. We use a three eighths down, uh, three eighths compression to do our outline cuts. So seven sixteenths is our spacing. So we get an extra sixteenth on the cuts. Here you can sequence the flip side parts first. I'll show you that after. Uh, you, here you can sequence by cabinet number. That's handy because it will cut out all cabinet one and then it'll count, cut out cabinet two, cut out cabinet three. It kind of tries to sprinkle in other parts 
throughout if it's got an um, open spot on a sheet. But for the most part, it'll cut out cabinet one completely, uh, cabinet two completely, and then it's uh, way more efficient if you're cutting, edging, assembling right off the bat. Uh, that's a good button to use. Um, then you can just go like, here you can change your optimization quality. We usually just go better. It's, pretty, it's very fast. Uh, best is really super slow, so we'll just go with the better. And there's other settings here which we can get into later, but if you're just straight up trying to get to the, to the cut sheets, you hit the optimize button right here. The computer will do a bunch of gobbledygook thinking about how it's going to run the parts. And boom, so you can see here we have patterns 1 through 12 of 25. So if you hit this button, it'll show you the other ones. Um, everything that's a light green color is has operations on the opposite side. So if you are in the view all patterns, say if I select this sheet and I flip, hit this flip parts, that will flip all the parts for this sheet. This obviously has drilling on the back side, so there's operations on both sides. So you have to be careful of that. We can go through that later. So we go back. If you want to flip everything on every sheet and you, you hit view all patterns, so you're on a sheet, you hit view all patterns here, flip parts, it'll flip every sheet, everything that's green over, save you having to manually flip them all over. Anything that stays green still has operations. So a piece like this, if I right click, it opens up this menu and you can edit the shape and you can view the operations. This is, I have a video on this whole thing already. Uh, if you hit this button here, it'll flip this over and you can see that you have, uh, you have a groove on this side, you have some holes on this side, but on the other side you have uh, back boring for shelving. So a lot of times you'll wanna select that, change it to a through bore. So 0.75 would go all the way through. Mosaic will automatically stop it at the right depth so we just make it go all the way through. And if you zoom in and right click on it, you can move it to the opposite face. So now what it's doing is it's all the operations are on the other side and it's drilling through to get these holes on this side because that's technically the side you want it on. So we flip it back over and when I click OK and then I flip this part over, it's no longer green. So you can see all the operations are on that, that side. Uh, so that's that covers pretty much here. So if you want to go generate code for this, generate the G code, which is what the file that you're required to run on your CNC machine, um, you just click generate G code, calculate, and it's going to bring up this. And here you can isolate all the different little settings that you have going on here. So all the different tool paths, I mean. So you have a uh, five millimeter drilling. You got pockets for all of our qualified tenons. Uh, we have our cutout pass, and you can also simulate it, so it'll just go all the way around. Uh, you can generate the code for only some of them if you deselect all tools. So you can generate the code for, like, say, just the drilling pass. If you select all tools, it'll just do all the drilling or all the tool paths for the G code. Uh, so then you click this G, G code box, and you can create a flip side sheet if you want to get into that. There's ways to do uh, flip uh, dowels on the spoil board and you can flip the sheet over if you have two-sided machining which is accurate but it's too much work we prefer to keep everything on the same side so you don't have to do that part but you can create a flip side program here you can create an individual flip side program uh, where you just drop the part in the corner of the CNC and if you have a good way to locate it you can just do the operations manually on that sheet individually for the most part, you're going to create a primary sheet program and click OK. From there, it's going to open up this box where you can, you know, save your G code. Click Save, saves your G code file. Uh, so then, if you click View, you can view the G code. This is basically the code that tells the CNC to go X, Y, zero, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so that's about it for that tab and G code tab I don't really use this one too much because everything can be done from the other tab 
you can view all patterns and generate G code and that will run the code for every single sheet. You can even do it for all the materials. So if you want to run it for every material, you can click that. Uh, so yeah, then the G code one I don't use too much because everything can be done pretty much through the other one. It does have certain printouts and DAO locators and stuff like that, but pretty rare I'll use this, this one. Labels tab here, you can label all your all your stuff. So if you click there and view the label, you can print out uh, labels specifically for each part. Uh, this is for our how we set it up. And then we can go to summary. Summary is just a summary of the patterns and the how good the yield is and stuff. Not I don't use that one too much. So that's basically how you use the um, how you use the optimizer. We can drop into the other material that we ran, and for me, it's a different tool set. So we have to change that. Then we run that. And then you generate, or you gotta flip all your parts. Obviously there's still machining on both sides, so we'll have to edit that, but no big deal. And that's basically it. So thanks for watching, have a good one.